Battlefront 2 was released in 2017 and was not well received. At best, it's considered a mixed bag. A game that could have been great but let down by some disastrous decisions. And one of those decisions I want to focus on in this video is the bad guy problem. It's no secret that a lot of people were looking forward to playing as the Empire. After decades of playing the Jedi, Rebels, and other goody-goody two-shoes in Star Wars games, it's unsurprising that a lot of people wanted a new, fresh perspective. What we got instead was just a lazy cop-out, and the main character joining the good guys. But it's not just the lazy writing that's a problem. The main problem I have with Battlefront 2 was that they had this unique opportunity to challenge the audience, make us question our existing perceptions. It could have made us understand why men and women fought for the Empire. And there is something that puts Battlefront 2 to shame in every single possible way. But first... The cop-out. Let's recap what happened. Aiden Versio, after faithfully serving the Empire by adding hundreds of rebels to her body count, goes to war with the Empire over your squad mate not wanting to bring an extra five passengers? Yes, I'm not kidding. She wants to bring five more civilians onto a rescue ship. But then your squad mate has a meltdown because the original mission was to bring only one passenger? So you shoot your teammate, and suddenly from there you go to war with the Empire. Directly surrender to the rebels, then offer to fight for them, and then participate in the Battle of Jakku, where the Empire is finally vanquished. It's incredibly lazy, contrived, unchallenging, and it just feels dehumanizing. I came out of Battlefront 2 not understanding why anyone would ever want to serve the Empire. Why jump ship for the rebels? Why destroy your own loyal Imperial citizens? Why freak out over five extra passengers? Why Aiden cares about redeeming her father? Why did he go down with the Empire? And the answer is... Because they didn't bother to humanize the characters. The writers never bothered to ask why. The end result is that no one, despite how well acted and expressive they appear, come off as cardboard characters who just do good or bad things because they're good or bad characters. Let's be fair. It's kinda obvious that the story was written at the last minute. From what I've heard about game development, the writing is often not the top priority when developing games. It's usually the gameplay and power fantasy that developers spend the most time trying to get right. Two sentences can justify just about anything, and that's the right way to bring in story, so bring it in near the end. Thankfully, there are some exceptions that make the story the highlight, but I digressed. While a part of me knows that games don't often offer compelling, thoughtful stories with well-written characters, and yes, this is still Star Wars, a franchise that started out simple like a fairy tale, before becoming this bloated property. This, to me personally, still feels pretty gross with what they did with this opportunity. Or to be more specific, what they didn't do with this opportunity. Now, why does this personally offend me? Why make this? I grew up being raised to believe that human beings have the innate potential to be good, that it requires someone or the right environment to realize that potential. I always wanted to know why some people never had that innate potential for good realized. Which of course meant the problem occurred from nurture, not nature. It made me ask myself, if I could have believed or done morally bad things, if I was born in different circumstances. So those Buddhist Confucian beliefs probably made me more empathetic and more of a humanist, which I consider myself today. The other transformative experience was a result of World War II media, or one movie to be exact. I was already playing World War II games like Call of Duty at a young age. Those games humanized the allies. What the hell are you doing, Sarge? I don't know. I sure hope it works. By giving us likable characters who spoke the language we understood. 
Private Martin, you're on the obstacle course and doing weapons training today. There wasn't any ideological reason given to fight for the Allies, but they were relatable and therefore the good guys. Got him. Damn. And naturally, anyone saw the Germans as the bad guys. They didn't sound like us. And they shot at us because we were the good guys, right? But what changed my entire perspective was how one day I was looking for a World War II movie to watch and I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready for Stalingrad. It's a movie about the raw brutality of war. Soldiers die in horrific and wretched ways. Soldiers look outright terrified or break under pressure. Even sacrifices that would be portrayed to be heroic in other movies are portrayed... ...tragically. And it's also the other side who suffers. The opposing side shows themselves to be human beings too. And the thing is, this movie was from the German perspective. The same guys I was shooting and having fun doing so. Besides the traumatizing brutality, the movie shows ordinary men, ordinary men who seems like any other human being, enjoying life, having camaraderie, and are just doing their duty, only for the movie to slap the audience, like my nine-year-old self, and show what war does to people, people who otherwise seem like human beings, even if they fought for a cruel and evil regime. I want to make it clear. Just because I felt sorry for them, doesn't mean that they were the good guys. Them winning against the others often resulted in some of the darkest chapters in human history. And yet, still... It's heartbreaking seeing real, humanized characters suffer like this. I want to fully apologize for taking this emotional tone of whiplash. I teared up just editing these clips together. If it felt manipulative, you're right, it is manipulative. I was torn on whether to include this or not. But the reason why I decided to show this in the end is because this movie genuinely reshaped my worldview. It made me see the problems of movies and games dehumanizing the bad guys. I want more media to treat people like human beings. <laughs> Having their own wants, desires, fears, and flaws. Not portray people as these barbaric creatures for these hollow, empty shells. Yes. I just wish more media would try to understand and treat people like human beings, even if they were raised to believe in immoral values. Son, we should never forget our past. Lots of mistakes were made back then, but there were also lessons. Forgetting those times means the mistakes were for nothing. That all those people died for nothing. I want to feel conflicted and torn seeing Aiden 
wrestle with her loyalty to the Empire. I wish we could have seen her remain faithful to the Empire, even as it's crumbling before her eyes. It just makes me wonder... what could have been. I want to see her try to rationalize the Empire's actions, even if deep down somewhere inside her, she feels like it's wrong. And it's not like there's no historical precedent for this. We have Aiden Versio being part of the Imperial Special Forces, and historically, elite units from the German and Soviet militaries, which both countries are big influences on the Galactic Empire, really valued ideological indoctrination. They wanted their elite soldiers to risk their lives for a greater purpose, and the indoctrination had the added benefits of justifying atrocities. Even regular German soldiers justified disproportional punitive actions. Every country, even aggressors, will convince themselves that this was in self-defense, that whatever they did had to happen to defend their people against some greater threat, even if they're entirely wrong. This is Pol Bolshevism, and we have tried to protect our land, and for all things, maybe in Europe. If we didn't hold Bolshevism, it would have come to their land, and maybe to France, and so on. We don't have to hold it. We should see Aiden view the rebels as an existential threat to her friends, family, and the world she grew up in. She should try justifying the Scorch Earth policies the Empire is enacting, thinking it might be necessary to win the war, which should be her top priority as an elite soldier. We also could have seen Aiden and Del, her boyfriend, having a falling out because of their ideological differences. Del seems like the newest member to the squad. Maybe his training and indoctrination was cut short due to the ongoing war, so he might be more open-minded and less invested in the Empire. Of course there's conflict in me. I'm not blind. I know what the Empire is capable of, but what else is there? Mixing love and her political beliefs could have added some drama to the relationship. There was a game called Pillars of Eternity 2, you have my undivided attention, as always. And I found myself romancing a character who turned out to have some yikesy pro-colonial opinions. I think the company needs to grab every advantage, even if it means a little mischief with the locals. And despite how troubling those imperialist views were, uh, I still couldn't find myself breaking up with her. That's all to say, maybe at the end, Aiden has to make a choice between the Empire and Del. While choosing Del would probably be the easy and predictable happy ending option, at least the payoff would be more satisfying than flipping sides one hour into the game. I guess I just wish the writers and creators on Battlefront 2 took this opportunity to really challenge the audience, put out a compelling and thoughtful story with believable characters who feel humanized, the writers should always be asking why when writing the characters' actions. And I personally would have liked to have seen the Empire's fall hit harder to us. After all, people are victims of their environments. Having said all I can about Battlefront 2's wasted potential, I'm actually glad to say that Battlefront 2 is completely surpassed by this book called Lost Stars. Lost Stars is a masterclass in how you respectfully and maturely explore the perspective from the bad guys. Lost Stars is about two kids who dream about joining the Empire so that they can fly. There's Thane who also wants to fly away to avoid his cruel and abusive family. And then there's Sienna, who values loyalty and keeping oaths due to her cultural upbringing. It's clearly set up that, unlike Thane, who's very distrustful of authority due to his family's abuse, 
Sienna's devotion to loyalty makes her ideal for the Empire, and therefore a tragic victim of it. Sienna is 100% the best written tragic character in all of Star Wars. Like many characters in the book, she is so well-rounded and humanized. She isn't some unthinking, unquestioning, goose-stepping officer that we've seen time and time again. She strongly loves her family, she has her own ethical code, she tears up when her pet space horse passes away, she's awfully caring to others, her romantic relationship with Thane is, uh, steamy, and yet, all these amazing character moments and traits can't save her from the Empire. And unlike Anakin and every other Star Wars tragic hero, it's not some single puppeteering individual with some convoluted plan to turn Sienna evil. No, she just wants to fly. And the Empire just was an opportunity to fly. And it's her ethical beliefs that keeps her chained to the Empire. And even as she starts to see more and more of the Empire resort to brutality, she actually tries to justify it, even if she doesn't agree with it. After you devote a decade of your life to joining the Empire, forming friends there, and seeing no alternative, it just makes sense. Everyone just sees themselves as the heroes in their own story. Much later into the book, she does admit that the Empire has gone too far in places, but instead of fighting it and bringing death and destruction to the galaxy, like what her lover and now rebel defector, Thane, is doing, she wants and believes that good people in the Empire can maybe change it from within, make it a better government. And that's just something you never see in Star Wars. She's also justifiably crushed to see her close friends and comrades die at the hands of the rebels. And the fact that Thane joined the other side that ended their lives understandably hurts Sienna. She even tells Thane to his face that she thinks he joined the rebels because of his abusive father making him rebellious. Like, we're actually exploring why people do the things they do. Thane is suspicious of authority figures thanks to his childhood. He's a product of his environment, which is why I sorta of could see Thane leave the Empire upon seeing them enslave and torture aliens on one of the planets. It's a bit tropey, but at least they set it up, unlike Battlefront 2. Regarding death in this book, whereas Star Wars in general only focused on the spectacle, got I got him! Lost Stars shows us how heavy the deaths hit our characters. There are scenes like when Sienna is communicating with the pilots chasing the Falcon in Episode 5. What was a thrilling chase scene in the movie is now portrayed and recontextualized as an awful loss of life that Sienna witnesses. Thane is also hit hard by the loss of life. He spent some time with Dak, Luke's co-pilot in Episode 5, and when he realized he died in a horrible way, it sorta of devastates him. For a good chunk of the book, he's also constantly worried if he killed Sienna in any skirmish he has with the Empire and he might never even know. All he can do is justify his actions, saying it was either him or them. He tries to numb the thought that he could ever be responsible for randomly killing Sienna. There's so much about the book that I want to bring up, like how it mentions the Clone Wars resulted in a lot of chaos in the galaxy, which the Empire offered stability. There's stuff about the infighting in the Empire, the fact that Imperial officers are in short supply, and so Sienna is promoted to command a Star Destroyer at just 25 years of age. There's an Imperial character called Nash, who's a native to Alderaan, but after seeing the Death Star destroy his planet, he succumbs to depression and continues to serve the Empire because he sees no other alternative. But it's a pretty long book. Still, as much as I really, really want people to read the book themselves, I do have to talk about the ending. Instead of Thane redeeming or convincing Sienna to leave the Empire, and then she suddenly joins the Rebellion like a certain someone, after the Battle of Endor, Sienna actually wants to die. 
she doesn't care about the Empire anymore after they imprisoned her mother for corruption allegations. She's seen how brutal the Empire actually is. They destroy a childhood possession of hers while she's recovering from a near fatal injury. And so many of her friends are just dead. But instead of Sienna deserting, she actually sticks around. Not only does she worry what will happen to her family if she does desert, but she also just doesn't see a future beyond the Empire. As an Imperial officer, she sees herself being put on trial by the Rebellion. And she stays on, not for the Empire, but for her own interests, and maybe she can save as many lives under her command. Eventually during the Battle of Jakku, she decides a damaged Star Destroyer can't fall into Rebel hands, but she also uses this as a way out, a way to go down and die since there's nothing left for her. But then Thane shows up and tries to convince her to leave. She refuses and they both get into a physical fight, and he manages to drag her out onto an escape pod, only for her to then be arrested and put in prison. There she still remains, defiant. She still believes in loyalty, in spite of everything. Thane and Sienna both argue about their allegiances but make no headway. At the end though, the one thing they both agree on is that if their roles were reversed and Thane was in that prison cell, Sienna would be there for him. It's just so touching. <sighs> I never knew a romantic novel would be pretty much everything I wanted. While Battlefront 2 uses the Empire perspective as a shallow bait and switch, not to mention LARP around in bad guy aesthetics, Lost Stars uses the perspective to tell a story with characters you care about, fleshed out characters who we know why they make the decisions they make. They're portrayed to be products and victims of their environments. And lastly, it looks at Star Wars and challenges our perceptions. I want to wholeheartedly thank Claudio Gray, the author, for sincerely caring about the characters and treating them like human beings. I'm Sam Blips, and thanks for watching. I'd like to thank Nati, Narv, and JG Plagiarisms for backing me on Patreon. I really appreciate any help on my channel, whether it's Patreon, liking the video, commenting on it, or subscribing. Thank you.